This is Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com and today we'll be creating a spiral vector banner that you can use to go around other objects. It's basically creating a sandwich of layers such that it appears that there is a foreground and background, but rather they are totally disparate layers that have almost nothing to do with each other except the coincidence that they are starting and stopping in places where one could believe that they're part of the same thing. So, enough of staring at this repeating banner spinning, and uh, let's get into After Effects. So the first thing we want to do is create a new composition. So let's go ahead and we're going to make the HDTV 1080 24 frames a second preset, 1920 by 1080, and 30 seconds of duration is just fine. In our example, we use text that said spiral and then banners, and that'll be fine for our example as well. So we'll just align this in the center here. And this will serve as our object. Now this could be anything. This could be a rectangle or something that just happens to run in the center of the column. The next thing we want to do is to create the animation of the banners moving in the foreground. So in order to make sure everything gets spaced out correctly, I'm going to use the grid and then I'm going to go view snap to grid just to make sure that everything is snapping correctly and proportionally to this grid. Now I'm going to use the pen tool to draw out the shapes of the spiral and they can be as wide or thin as you want. Just make sure you set your fill beforehand and I'm going to use just a bright color. We're going to just go with maybe just white and 98 brightness. That's fine. And I'm going to just start clicking in here where I'd like sort of approximately things to be at. So. Let's see, maybe here and around here, and close off the shape. Now you can see it's kind of haphazard, but you can then drag the points when you're done onto the correct positions. So it's all mostly arbitrary, except that I know the sizes and shapes about that I want to be at. So this will serve as the template for what we're doing. So we have one of those. Now we open up the contents here of shape one. And we know that if the banner goes this way, it's going to be going from here to here. The next one we want to be going from here down to here. That means the next one on this plane will be going from this point up to here. So that'll be pretty good, but it is a bit tight for our purposes. So what I'll do is I'll go into the path and I'll just edit this path and drag these points out a little bit more like this, just so we'll have room to tell uh, more or less what's going on. So I'm going to duplicate this path, which will create path two. Then I select the path points of that and shift it along until it's in the correct spot. So we knew that these are going to go ahead one, one, two, and three. So then from this point, it's going to go one, two, and three, and then ahead again, one, two, and three, which should land us here, about, maybe about here. We'll be able to tell when we uh, flip this around. So let's just do a preliminary one of those. We're gonna duplicate, we're gonna go layer, transform, flip vertically, and then things should line up like so. Okay, so far they do, so that's all good. Let us continue making this series. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four spaces in between each of those, so. So going to take these, path two, duplicate that, grab the path points, move them ahead to be evenly spaced. Okay, looks good. What I will do is I will drag this back so that it's starting off the frame as we continue, so right there. And now duplicating past path three, grab that path, move it ahead, duplicate path four, and now you move it ahead. So it's one, two, three, and even more, and we're done. So that is gonna be enough to bring banners on and off, and this we will call top layer. Good, so now I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna move it below the object, and I'm gonna call this one bottom layer, perfectly good. And we're gonna go layer, transform, flip vertically, and then just move it into the correct spot. And we're just making sure everything is lining up. And so far that looks good. Okay, delete that again. Sorry to keep making and deleting things, but it's far easier if we do things my way. Just 
saying. Okay, so now we need to animate these. So we're gonna set keyframes for each of the paths on here, move ahead a bit, and we're gonna select all of the top points and bring them down to be with the bottom points. Okay, so that means that we have them animating away. That's not necessarily what we wanted. We would like them to animate from the bottom up. So we take all these keyframes here, move them there, and they're animating up like this. Set new keyframes, move ahead, select all of the bottom, move them up. So each of the objects is moving up and then moving up again. Okay, perfect, good stuff. We're doing, uh, doing quite well with this. Now let's take all those keyframes, move them back to the start. And now we are going to duplicate this. Finally, this is the last time I'm gonna ask you to do this. This is the bottom layers. Bottom layers should have a different fill color. They should be darker, so make them darker by far. Okay, good. Move them below, and then we're just going to shift them after we've gone layer, transform, flip vertically, and make them in the right spot. Now it's time to align their keyframes such that it makes sense. So as the first one comes up and completes, then we would like the first of the back things to come in, and then it starts, boop. And then when it's done, that's when the next of these begins. So you can kind of see the pattern that's going to result looking like stairs. So these will look like stairs going this way, and the others will look like stairs continuing, but offset from the first stairs. Let me just align all of these keyframes and then we will check to see if our work has been correct. Looks pretty correct to me. Do 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 do. Just like that. In fact, this last bunch is superfluous, but you know, still worth having, I think, just in case you choose to offset this at all. So maybe you want to take those, you want to just move them a little bit like this. Maybe, I don't know, you can do whatever you want. You're you're perfectly capable of doing that, I'm sure. So now what I want to do is I want to take these, all of these keyframes, and I want to easy ease them just so that they are easier coming into the corners like they're making a turn or a curve. Okay, good. Now we need to set up some artificial shadows. We could go ahead and make shadows the old fashioned way by using the drop shadow, but it just creates too much uh, wackiness going on. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep it simple, I want to keep it controlled, I want to take the grid off, and then now we're going to make those shadows. So, what shadows do we need? Well, there would be a shadow cast by the top layer onto the object layer. So duplicate the object layer, set it to be black, uh, hit T here and set its opacity to like 50% maybe. Now take the top layer, I'm going to duplicate that, top layer 2 is a perfectly good name, and set object layer 2 to have a track mat that is the alpha mat of top layer two. And now I'm just gonna poke top layer two over a bit so that it has this shadow coming under it. So as it animates through, it's got that coming through, perfect. Now the banners should also be casting on themselves. So top layer two, duplicate it, and we're gonna have it cast on bottom layers meaning bottom layers too, you have a track mat of alpha mat of top layers, you know, just like that. And then it should have a fill of black and it should have an opacity of 50%. That seems about fair. So let's see how well that looks animating on. Yeah, I'm seeing shadows, shadows on that, shadows on that. And uh, what else requires shadows? Well, I would think that the object is going to cast shadows on the bottom layers. So we need bottom layers two, a second one of those, and a second one of the object. Good, and then poke the eye out here. Then we set this object to be over and down a bit. And I think we've got all of our bases pretty well covered. So when we see that animate through, you can see the shadows are being cast yeah, I think all these shadows are being cast in the correct way. So now what we want to do is we want to take all of this in comp three, take all of that. We want to go layer, pre-compose, call this spiral object. Okay, good. We want to give a background back here. So we go new solid and you know, we make that solid, uh, whatever we'd like. 
Okay, okay. Put that back there like so, and it's looking pretty good. I wouldn't worry about casting shadows on the background because it's pretty, you know, weird and ethereal in itself, so we don't know if it's even close enough to accept shadows from this, so let's not uh, go ahead and make weird assumptions about such things. Now, one thing that can result is I want you to look really closely and see these tiny lines here. Now, we thought we animated those away, but it's just a weird thing that happens with pixels is that sometimes these kind of aberrations can happen. So what I want you to do, click on that layer, double click on the rectangle tool and make a mask. And we can take this mask and we can pinch in just ever so closely to that line. We don't want to cut away very much of this, but we want to cut away just enough so it nixes out that line and they're all gone. Oh, almost, almost have it. Hold on, we'll get it. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, good, I think that's got it. And if you have them on the bottom, then uh, cut them off there too. And it's not enough to really harm the image, but it's just enough to clean it up for you, so you don't have that issue. But all in, this is how you make the spiraling banner. Now, ours goes much faster and animates in a totally different speed, because what I did was I went layer, time, enable time remapping, which will create two keyframes of the time. I set one here at 10 seconds, because I know that 10 seconds is when all of our animation was done. Then I remove the keyframe at the end. And then I take this 10 second piece and I make it very much shorter. Uh, 10 seconds is now remapped to being, you know, a minute and six. So we, it just spirals by super fast. And then I hold down Alt, click on the keyframe there, and I say loop out and then in brackets and inside quotes, I type cycle, which will cycle through this animation over and over and over again. So you've got an infinite, infinite running loop. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is not letting your layers uh, get moved around. If the timing starts to uh, get weird, you might have layers that are in the wrong spots, but you know, all in, that's pretty easy to find and identify. Now you have spiral banners curling around things, or at least seeming to curl around things using totally flat objects. And this is a strategy you can use for all sorts of things. Now, if you want to go ahead and add some motion blur or whatever, you go totally ahead with that. But that about does it for me. So this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com, your source for royalty-free music and sound effects like the ones you hear uh, at the start of this tutorial. And of course, stop by premiumbeat.com and check out the blog for tips, tricks, and tutorials in not only After Effects, but other applications as well, and hear from industry experts how to get the most out of your programs. So this has been Evan Abrams. You can check me out at evanabrams.com or at ecabrams on Twitter, or check out my YouTube channel. It's pretty awesome. I've been told. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.